In this lesson, we will learn how to handle sending and receiving streams when using Corenta from the client side. Same as with CPaaS providers, media servers often hide the complexity of calling WebRTC APIs. That's why in our application, we will use the Corenta Utils library to handle all these tasks. So basically, after the server has created the outgoing WebRTC endpoint and has also created the user, it sends a message to the new users about the list of the current participants of the call. The client side of that user in turn create the required HTML elements and also create an offer and also starts with the negotiations to be able to receive such streams. At the same time, it sends a message to all of the users that were already on the call about the new, about the new participant and Similar to, to what happened before, those users also create the required HTML elements and also initiate with the corresponding negotiation. So let's jump into code. As you can see, for the new participant arrived event and for existing participants, we have two different functions. The first one is receive video and the other one is on existing participants. So let's create these functions right now. Let's start by receive video. So let's create a function, receive video. And here we're going to receive a couple of parameters. First one is the ID of the user and the username. Oh, uh, I mean, we just need the ID. We just need the, the, the variable. So let's just put the username. Okay, sorry about that. Now in here, we're gonna create an HTML element dynamically. So let's define the video and let's use the document, the DOM and the create element function. Let's name this video. Let's also create a div similar to the previous one, create element this will be of type div. Let's put a class name to that div of video container. Now let's create another div for, for showing the name, the username. This will be of type div. And let's add some attributes to the video element. First of all, an ID, which which will be equal to the user ID. Oh, I I don't need those quotes in here. Also, we need the autoplay attribute set to true. Now let's start adding all these elements to the DOM. First, let's add some text to the name div. by appending and creating a text node. It will have the username. Next, let's append the video element to the div and also append the name element. Finally, let's add that div to the meeting room by using also a pen child. So now we have created the required HTML elements. Now let's store some information about the user. Let's create a user variable in which we will store the ID, also the username. Let's also store the video element and we create a new element here called an RTC peer. We will talk about this in a second. For now, let's uh, set it with a null value. Also, let's add this user to the list of participants. Okay. Now let's set some options that we will use 
in a moment and these options we will set where we should show the stream of the new participant remember that we are using we, we are creating the receive video function that is called by the new participant arrive event so we are telling that the stream should be received in the newly created video element and also let's set an a nice candidate function that we will create soon so nice candidate okay now we're gonna we're gonna do some interesting stuff let's use that rtc peer object that we have just created and we're gonna use the current uh, utils library we're gonna call the web rtc peer object and the web rtc peer receive only object so what are we doing here remember that when we when we talk about endpoints there will be two type of endpoints one that will take the streams from the user and send them to the other endpoints of the of the pipeline and another one that will receive the streams from the other endpoints and will send that to the client side of the user so in here we are creating basically a peer connection that will be in charge of receiving those streams this uh, correspond to the create receive only webrtc steps now we need to create an offer for this peer connection and send that offer to the server so in here let's set the options that we have just created and let's create an anonymous error function if there's an error let's handle it appropriately by re uh, returning a mess uh, console error and if everything goes well we will create an offer generate offer and when we have the offer created we will call an on offer function that we will create in a second okay let's create those functions as inner functions on offer will be equal to a function that receives the error an offer if everything goes well and an additional variable that we won't use so in here let's set let's create a message the message will be of receive video from we will send the user ID the room name and the offer uh, sorry about that SDP offer which will be equal to offer finally let's send the message next let's create another in inner function this will be on ice candidate we receive the candidate and an additional variable that we won't use and same as before let's create a message that which will have the event candidate we need quotes in here we will also send the user ID our room name and the candidate finally let's send a message so this is the workflow for for when there's a new user that joins the call which will be this part of here 
Now let's take a look at what happens when what happens with the with the user that is joining the room. As you can see, it's a very similar flow, with the only difference that instead of creating a receive only WebRTC peer object, we're gonna create a send only WebRTC peer object. So let's get back to the code. I will simply copy this function. And we'll create a new one. Oh, uh, I think I missed uh, that part. Okay, let me copy the function again. Okay, have it now. Now let's go to the bottom of the page and paste it here. Okay, I'm gonna change the name to on existing participants which is the event that is going to receive the, the user that has just joined the call instead of receiving the user the, the username it will receive a list of the existing users so let's say this name now let's make a couple of changes in here uh, the first one is going to be this username which we already have through the username global variable this one so let's change that oh I, I have an error here that I haven't noticed <laughs> okay fix it okay getting back to this we change the username variable let's also change that in here and before the options let's define a constraint object constraints And the constraints that will be used when the current utils library called the get user media api so we're gonna receive audio and we also gonna receive video but let's add some custom options in here first of all we're gonna add some mandatory constraints about the max width that will be 320 pixels also a max frame rate of 15 frames per second and a minimum frame rate of also 15 now let's add some additional options instead of remote video here we're gonna, we're gonna put local video which we will use the newly created video element the onice candidate remain the same and we will add another options to send the constraints okay now let's change instead of receive only we will use a send only and in this way, we have defined the negotiation process to be able to send the local stream to the server. But what about getting the remote streams from the other users? So let's add an additional line in here. For going through all the existing users on the call and asking to the server for their streams. Now, how are we gonna get their streams? Same as the other users get the stream of the new user by calling the receive video function. So let's go down here and call the receive video function. Put the element ID to get the user ID and the element name to get the username let's fix the, mis the fix the error oh. in here and we're ready for send and receive media streams when you're ready move to the next lesson